Even though my alarm time is not a surprise for me, I still struggle a little bit to open my eyes and accept the fact that my warm bedtime is over. But after a few minutes, cold water helps me to welcome the morning and open my eyes. I start my daily routine which takes around 20 minutes. Mornings are still pretty cold so I wrap myself like a penguin. Plus the face mask is still mandatory on the train so I just simply put it at home so I don't need to worry later. My major help in the morning is my electric scooter which takes me to the station in around 8 minutes. I quick check if there are no delays or changes. Hold my scooter and start climbing all these stairs. So that's my usual time when I arrive at the station, six minutes before the train. And here is my usual train to central London. I call this 37 minutes prime time. The reason is that the first 10 minutes I dedicate to my daily meditation. After 10 minutes, I use Duolingo, my language app where I practice Spanish. Even though it's not even 6 a.m., I can feel the rush hour is coming. I'm also cautious about time as I have 15 minutes to arrive to the bakery, change, clock in and get ready to work. Every morning I pass the glorious Tower Bridge. The only chance to see London roads that empty. The bread production site. These ovens and baskets are only used for bread. Since I work on pastry side, let's head there. We have a paper and this door version of Nice and Plus list. When I arrive, the night baker is close to finish all packing for the deliveries and the pastries are left aside for the count. The remaining job for the night baker is to fill almond croissants and hazelnut pine and chocolate. Baked croissants are being filled with almond paste and topped with flaked almonds and pine and chocolate, filled with hazelnut paste and topped with hazelnut and drizzled with chocolate. One of the sections is lamination, where one of us jump as soon as you are ready, as it takes some time. We have 10 doughs today. The first step is to flatten the butter. Each dough requires 2 blocks of butter, and it means we are flattening 20 of these. We roll the dough to the required length and thickness, We put flattened butter between the layers of the dough. Rolling again. We trim the edges when you cannot see any layers of butter and dough. We close the dough as nicely as possible, folding the trimmed edges inside. Ideal size of the laminated dough should be as big as a metal tray we use here. Then we leave the dough to rest in the freezer. We roll the dough, trim the edges and close again, making sure there are no gaps between the dough or on the inside edge of the second fold. We place it in a plastic dough bag and rest in the freezer again till we start shaking the pastry. All these trimmings are not going to the bin. We save them and they are going to be used for cinnamon bun dough tomorrow. This pastry is made of a laminated croissant dough with added layers of sweetened butter. We line the metal muffin tray with some baking parchment paper and put quite a generous pinch of granulated sugar. Then we brush both sides of the pastry with melted butter and dip in a sugar mix. We shape the square in a star and press in a muffin tray. We have 83 pan raisins to cut for tomorrow. These logs are prepared a day in advance. It is normal to have some scrappy bits, so instead of throwing them away, I leave them and it is going to be a morning snack for the staff tomorrow.
the dough we use is always done a day before. Here, the dough is being taken out, weighed up, folded and arranged for tomorrow. On the rolled dough, we spread cinnamon butter over two thirds of the dough and do a letter fold lengthwise. We cut this folded dough into strips and shape. This part is actually the most rewarding and fun. We are only shaping 174 today. Busy days we can do even around 500. What we do is line these pastry discs, later blind bake them and now we're filling them with the jam and almond frangipan. To make sure we spread frangipan evenly, we use this metal scoop so every tart gets an even amount of filling. Finally, we sprinkle flaked almonds. That is it! 336 bakewells are done. We cut the dough horizontally into three long strips. Then we cut vertically to create strips of around 100-108 grams per piece. We use two chocolate batons per pastry and roll this way. We tray up 15 pastries on the tray. As numbers show, we are making just two and a half hundred of pine and chocolate in it. So it will be real quick. First, we fold the dough in half horizontally and trim the edge. Then we cut the dough along the opposite side and after that simply cutting triangles for the crossings. Today we roll three and a half hundred of crossings. All pastries will be distributed between deliveries, counter and left for almond crossings. No doubt, it's the most popular pastry here. We begin by taking the polish out of the prover, which is always done one day ahead and left to prove on slow mode. The milk goes first to the mixer, where the fresh yeast, polish, sugar, flour and finally salt added to the mix. Mix for 6 minutes. We cover with some plastic dough bags and leave it to rest for 15-20 minutes. After resting we're taking the dough out portion in 6.8 kg pieces and shape the dough in the oblong shape. Then we allow to rest on the bench for around 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, the dough is being transferred to the line trays and placed in the plastic dough bag. First, we roll the dough down, trim the wings of the dough to create a rectangle. Next, we spread evenly vanilla cream pat and then sprinkle soaked raisins. We carefully roll the dough into a tight swirl. We cut the roll into four pieces and then put them in the freezer. This part is probably the least exciting, but very important. We scrub the machines we use, tables, containers, provers, and finally the floor. Lastly, we check the temperature of the freezers and the fridges so we make sure everything functions properly. On my way to changing room, I quickly have a look at how are we doing today and how much pastries did we sell. The last person leaving the pastry side locks the bakery. Helmet on, clock out done, let's head to the London Bridge to catch the train home. I have around 40 minutes till I arrive to the station. I got used to, to use this time every day, so I do something differently. 
Sometimes I read, watch or even take a quick nap if I'm really tired. Home sweet home. I change quickly as I have another very important thing in my life coming up. After years working in the kitchen, I've learned the hard way that exercise or some sort of stretching is essential as we relax our joints, muscles, and especially tension points. So my routine is different and the same in a way. Firstly, I do the warm up. Then normally focus on one of specific body parts or opposite. Move my whole body by doing HIIT workout. After releasing the tension built during the day, I always finish with some stretching exercises. Sometimes I only do yoga. Basically, I simply listen to what my body is telling me. Sport in general is not just a physical exercise for me. It's more a way to release negative energy and set my body and mind free. After a quick shower, I'm heading to one of my favorite part of the day. Mate. To make mate, you need what they call calabasa, yerba mate, hot water, bombilla, which is this metal straw. Also, mate is not just energizing drink. It's also a company, so I will go to do my Spanish homeworks with Mati. Plus, I just made a very quick snack. That's the cashew spread uh, with some avocado, chili peppers and uh, nigella seeds. Just something really quick. Y vamos a ver. kill the Spanish homework which uh, I will have the lesson tomorrow and the rest I need to finish a roll for for my upcoming video dinner for two of us. Nothing is really fancy as I had a quite a busy day at home so no kitchen wonders today. Just oven roasted potatoes with a bowl of fresh salad with hummus. After quick dinner I'm already thinking about tomorrow and that I need to give enough of rest for myself. My following morning actually depends on how well I plan my evening as I leave aside my clothes that I'm planning to wear tomorrow. I also prepare my backpack, leave things out that I know that I will need in the morning such as scarf, hat, face mask and jacket. Why so much planning in advance, you may ask? I don't live in central London and my bakery is pretty far so if I want to have a fluent morning, I prepare what I can so I just fly in the morning. I always set two alarms just in case and Alejandro is still busy for another 3-4 hours. In the meantime, good night and thank you for watching.